Hi guys, so you're tuning in to the video on predicting muscle actions, um, looking at agonists, antagonists, and synergists. Uh, so before we get into that though, I wanted to bring up a couple points on origins and insertions. So the action of a muscle is determined by the location of that muscle. Um, the non-moving component of the muscle is called the origin while the moving component of the muscle is called the insertion. Um, the insertion will move towards the origin, okay? And then the large area of the muscle between the origin and insertion is called the belly. Uh, for the muscles of facial expression, the origin is on the face bone or the skull, and the insertion is on the skin, which allows for expression. Um, and then in the limbs, because uh, most muscles or the tendons span a joint, so elbow joint, knee joint, etc., cetera. Um, and uh, the origin is going to be proximal to the insertion. So that means when contraction happens, it results in movement of the insertion of the distal bone towards the origin or the proximal bone. Okay, so I've also put in a nice little picture of you guys just writing that out. So go ahead and look at that. So muscles that perform similar functions are surrounded by fascia and these are called compartments. Uh, these compartments are served by the same major blood vessels and nerves. Um, also within a location, they can ha uh, have compartments of superficial and deep muscles. Um, muscle compartments in the limbs are often uh, or they often exhibit opposing pairs of muscles at joints. So what this means is that, um, or I'll give you a couple examples. So in the arm, the muscles of the anterior arm are flexors, while the muscles of the posterior arm are extensors. So flexors extensors back here okay um say like similar with the, the the thigh specifically so muscles that are on the medial portion of the thigh are adductors while mu muscles of the lateral thigh are abductors have included a picture For complex movements, muscles will work in groups to be able to perform that movement. Um, the larger muscles in the group or the primary mover is typically termed the agonist. Uh, smaller muscles within that group are called synergists because they help the, the agonists perform the muscle action. And then the antagonist is the muscle that performs the opposing movement. So if it was flexion was the primary movement, then the muscles that perform extension will be the antagonist. Um, there are also things called fixators. Um, and a good example of this is when you do a hanging crunch, you um, stabilize your abs, keep you in place while you move your legs up. Um, So now that we have all of that background information out there and you guys are, you know it, you're good, um, we can sort of learn how to predict muscle actions just based on the location of the muscle. Uh, so I personally really enjoy the sternocleidomastoid muscle, um, so I'm going to use that one as, a, as an example of predicting muscle actions. So you know it is here. Um, and if you know the origin is on the uh, sternum and the clavicle, then you would also know that the insertion is up here on your mastoid process. Um, that's where the name comes from, sternocleidomastoid, or sternoclavicle and mastoid. Um, so um, 
you know now that the insertion always needs to move towards the origin. In this case, if both of our sternocleidomastoid muscles contract, the belly is going to get larger. So, and your or sorry, and your insertion is going to go towards your origin. So, contraction like that causes flexion of the head. Um, the cool thing about this muscle is that it also has unilateral contraction, um, which causes rotation of the head. So if I just contract and contract that way, awesome. <laughs> um, so this can be used in other muscles as well to predict the actions or like this thought process can. So if we take the biceps brachii, for example, um, you know, that the origin is on or is more proximal than the insertion and the origin is on the sternum um not sorry not the sternum um the scapula while the insertion is on the radius so the biceps brachii has three separate actions the first one is to flex the forearm so the insertion is on the radius um, flexion of that bone causes it to come towards you so flexion of the forearm um, also supinates the forearm but I'm not gonna get too far in depth with that one here um, and it also works to flex the arm because it has the origin up here so flexion of the arm um, and you can predict the action just based on the fact that it is an anterior um, arm muscle. It's in the anterior compartment of the arm. Um, so you know now that it flexes the arm and flexes the forearm. To deduct the antagonist, you would have to guess, or, or not guess, you'd have to base it off of the specific action. So if I was going to say um, the antagonist to the movement of flexing the forearm, the antagonist uh, would be the triceps brachii. But if I was going to say an antagonist for the um, movement of flexing the arm, it could be anything from the latissimus dorsi, the deltoid, the teres major, teres minor, or the triceps brachii. Um, and then based off those two different answers, you could also look at the synergists to the biceps brachii. Now for flexion of the forearm, you have synergists of the brachialis, uh, the brachioradialis, or the pronator teres, okay? Um, but flexion of the arm, that movement has synergists of the pectoralis major and the deltoid. So depending on which muscle action you are speaking about, you need to be very clear when you answer questions about it, um, that can dictate the answer that we will be looking for on antagonists or synergists. Okay, I hope that helps. <laughs>